Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, I wanted to talk about, uh, I guess, assemblies in FreeCAD. Um, and I wanted to compare them to a, a few other programs. And then I have a, a quick, I guess, little demo here I'd like to do um, over the next few videos or so. Um, I have this uh, this kind of interesting tool here on the right. You'll notice it uh, looks kind of similar to a pair of pliers, um, but it's got some extra some extra bits in it. Um, it's got like you know an extra an extra set of uh, I guess joints you might say. And these are like long reach pliers. So if you were if you were reaching into let's say something that was really deep, right? And there was like something fairly substantial at the bottom. You know, if you have a normal set of pliers, you're not gonna be able to get the pliers in there um, because they're just too big, right? So with these, uh, this, I guess, extra long pliers, it kind of scissors its way down like this. And then it's able to uh, grab the, the thing at the bottom of, you know, this big, deep tube. Um, so explanation on that, um, real quick overview. So in this video, I wanted to talk about, I guess, how assemblies in FreeCAD work um, or don't work and uh, compare it to a few other programs. And then I quickly wanted to model this pair of pliers here on the right. So, We'll start out with, uh, I guess, talking about assemblies. So assemblies in FreeCAD. Um, by default, um, I believe FreeCAD does not handle assemblies. Uh, so actually, let's start out by talking about SolidWorks and how it handles assemblies. Um, so SolidWorks, if you don't know, is a proprietary um, piece of software made by, I believe, Dassault Systems. It's kind of industry standard. Its other competitor is Creo. And then uh, I guess halfway side competitor is, uh, I guess, AutoCAD and the AutoCAD family of products like Fusion 360 and Inventor and stuff like that. But in general, SolidWorks or Creo um, is the, I guess, the go-to for industry applications. And in SolidWorks, I'm going to talk about SolidWorks because I actually have zero experience using Creo. So in SolidWorks, um, you've got three types of, of files, right? You've got a part file, you've got an assembly file, and you have a drawing file, um, but we won't talk about the drawing file today, but basically the part file is connected to one drawing file, and then you make some parts and then you insert them into assemblies. And uh, that's basically how it works, um, right? So I have part here, part here, second part file. I can uh, make myself an assembly file and uh, insert these two files into the assembly file. And that's basically it. So the issue um, that this has that I'd like to uh, briefly talk about is imagine I had two parts, right? Let's say I've got one that looks like this and uh, I've got the other half of it, which looks like this, right? If I were um, in SolidWorks, um, I need to do some kind of interesting things if I want this geometry here to line up, right? So either I need to model these two separately and use some math um, to ensure that they, uh, I guess, line up correctly. And then I put them into the assembly file. And this, this is really the uh, way that SolidWorks is set up to be but this is kind of burdensome. Um, so what you can do is in an assembly file, you can just make a part file, right? So the part file like exists inside of the assembly, right? So it's not its own separate thing. And you can model two of these things together and then they can reference off of one another. Um, 
but this gets dangerous really quickly because your part here is connected to this assembly. So if you wanted to take these parts and use them in another assembly somewhere, you're gonna have trouble. Um, so then maybe you end up duplicating your parts and you know that just it just becomes a big hassle. Right, so I wanted to talk about, uh, I guess, how FreeCAD um, handles assemblies. And I'll start out by saying that FreeCAD really doesn't handle assemblies um, currently. So what FreeCAD does is you basically end up with a, uh, a file, right? And inside of this file, right, you can uh, create components. And the components just kind of float around in this file. And, uh, you know, they can reference off of one another. And then you can take the components and insert them into another file. Right. So this is a file. You can take a component from here and insert it into another file. That's OK. You can insert components back. And uh, this is, I guess, the general operation. There are, I guess, three pseudo assembly um, management tools. So there's A2 plus, assembly three, and assembly four. And they are they are different um, in the way that they do things. So A2 plus is most similar to uh, how SolidWorks or uh, like Fusion 360 would do things where you've got a set of constraints that you can put on parts and it'll, uh, I guess, figure out how to put the parts together. So imagine I have a, a circle here and then I've got the thing the circle goes into. I can tell it I want these two things to be concentric and it will figure out how they go together. Um, assembly three, very similar to uh, A2 plus. Assembly three is, I guess, basically the same. It does use kind of more mathy um, terms and it has a lot more options. Um, but other than that, very similar to A2 plus. Assembly three is a lot less, um, I guess, new person friendly. It's a lot different than uh, a lot of other, uh, I guess, assembly methods. And then A2 plus and assembly three um, both use like a brute force solving method. So they are, they're just going to attempt to solve, you know, the locations of these components. And it's going to take a while, right? So you'll notice if you use a Fusion 360 or SolidWorks that your assemblies you know, you, you make two parts together or you joint two parts together and they, I guess you can rotate them in, in real time and it's, it's not super slow. Um, both A2 plus and assembly three don't simplify, I guess, their model down. Um, so it does take a little bit of time to solve it. So I wouldn't recommend doing any types of large assemblies here with uh, either of them as it currently stands. And then uh, assembly four is kind of the odd one out. So assembly four is, it is very powerful, um, but it is very, very difficult to use. So in assembly four, you explicitly define coordinate systems for each one of your parts. And then this coordinate system gets mated um, to another coordinate system that you've put somewhere, I guess, typically, it is put inside of a, like a sketch. Um, and then you can use a macro or something, or you can go in and edit your sketch and it will, it will update. So the good thing about assembly four is it is very robust. Um, it will always find a solution because you are calculating the solution yourself. Um, so it will always work. It's great if you've got really complicated stuff. But uh, it is kind of a hassle to set up. So in, uh, in this series, um, here's my plan. So the first video in this series, which is the current video that you're watching, 
Um, we talked about this, and I'm going to use this free CAD without an assembly manager to model the pair of pliers over there. And then in the second video, I am going to use A2 Plus to, I guess, make these two parts. That'll probably be a uh, pretty short video. And then in video three, I'll do the same thing, but with uh, assembly three. And then in video four, um, I don't know if you're seeing the pattern here, but I'm going to do the same thing with uh, assembly four. That'll be a probably a little bit longer video, but I expect video one here is going to be uh, the longest by far, and video two and three should be like 10 minutes each. Video four probably ends up being about 20 or 30, but uh, we'll see when we get there. So I think that is a, a brief description um, of how this works. I guess real fast, one difference between A2 plus and assembly three and assembly four is whether they need their own part file. So A2 plus, um, I believe it needs its own part file. So you need to create a new file and then inside of this file, A2 plus will kind of take it over. And then you, you link to your parts and uh, A2 plus kind of handles everything. Assembly three um, uses a container structure. So you can have a part file and uh, you know you can have components in it and assembly three um, is just another component in this in this file and uh, you can put part files from the same file into it you can uh, grab parts from other files and put them into assembly three so it's a uh, pretty i guess universal um, it's not very restrictive and then assembly four, I haven't actually used assembly four, but I believe it is uh, the same as A2 plus in that it uh, it needs its own kind of container file. Um, but I could be wrong there. Um, let me know if I'm wrong, but that is, I guess the overview, the brief 10 minute overview. So I'm gonna switch over to FreeCAD here. And uh, I've got a new file, um, it's named pliers, and I've got my pair of pliers on the right here. And I'll briefly talk about um, what the plan is. So this pliers here is actually only two components. Um, it might not look that way, but there's a component that looks like this. And then there's the component that looks like this and the other half is just these two components rotated 180 degrees and then uh, it's got some I guess pins or rivets or something I'm not quite sure what they are but they look like uh, like rivets um, let's see rivet like this you know holds two pieces of uh, metal together and then they've come along and uh, chopped off the top and the bottom um, to give it this kind of flat finish. I, I think that's what this is. I'm not positive. It could be a variety of things, but that's my guess. Um, so we're gonna model these two components. I'm not actually going to mirror them over to the other half in this video, um, just the modeling for now. And, uh, yeah, so we will uh, we will get started. So in my pliers here, I'm going to switch over to part design. And I'll create a new body. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to delete this and make a new part. This doesn't this doesn't matter too much, um, but it is, I guess, nice to have the uh, the part. So I'll rename this part. Let's see, rename, and I will call this like handle, the handle part. And we'll come down here to this body. And I'll do a new sketch, do sketch on this plane. 
And for this, uh, I guess this video, I'm just going to kind of fairly simply model this. I'm not going to worry about all the curves and stuff. So just to uh, get this done quickly, I'll grab myself the, uh, let's see, the arc tool, and I want uh, end points and rim point. And I'll give myself two arcs here. And it looks to me like this is about a circle, so I'm going to uh, make these two center points coincident. That'll make these two arcs concentric. And then I'm going to give us like a little, a little arc on the bottom here just to straighten us out. And let's see. And I will make these two center points, oops, coincident. And I'm not sure if they actually should be coincident, but we'll figure out if it uh, has issues solving it later. Um, looks like that tangency got applied backwards. So we'll do this tangent and, oops. this there, tangent, righty, and we'll see if I can actually make this and that point there horizontal, um, and oops, let's see, horizontal, and this one horizontal there, and looks like it's doing good, so it liked that. And I'll just put a little box on the end of this. So nothing too special. We'll make that line vertical. And I'm going to use this, uh, this line down here at the bottom to, I guess, identify the thickness of this part. And then I'll try to keep that thickness constant throughout the whole part. So I shall grab myself a horizontal constraint. And this part, I don't know, it's probably like two millimeters. Um, it's difficult to judge with these things. I mean, this thing could be like, you know, a foot long, or it could be like a pair of pliers that they use to like, you know, put glasses together. Um, kind of difficult to tell. There's no, there's no scale, but I think that's a reasonable amount. So then I'll do a uh, line on the point there. And I'm actually going to just, uh, let's see, I'll dimension that there. Let's see. Oops. Let's see if we can move this up here. I want to, I just grab that and this and, yeah, let's see. So now it's kind of attached to the, uh, I guess the origin down here and mm, yeah, it looks like it's these, uh, these two points here don't appreciate being, I guess, concentric. I think that's uh, what's causing our issue. So let's see, let's see. Somewhere in here, there's a concentric mate. I believe it is this one. So yeah, much, uh, much better now, I think. So then I'm going to get us the, uh, I guess, kind of coming in part here, and then we'll get up to this more complicated, uh, I guess, riveted construction portion. So from here, I'll just uh, do this, and I think we'll dimension this part with uh, an angle. So I'll make these two lines parallel. Let's see, parallel. And I will grab myself a uh, construction line here. And I'll go from one point over to the other point and make this perpendicular. And I'll just use this line 
to be equal to this uh, original thickness. Just to give me some, uh, I guess, design constraints or design intent. And let's see. Yeah, we're looking pretty good here. Oops, something happened. Switch back to the start page there. And it looks like it comes up and it joins with a uh, kind of a circular portion. So I'll grab myself a uh, circle. And I'll, let's see. I will grab this and this. We'll make these two coincident, or I guess line, point on a line. And I'll grab those two, we'll do point on a line again. And for this one here, let's see. Looks like uh, we need another point on a line. All righty. This is looking pretty good. Um, let's see, I should define the thickness of this bit here. So I'm going to do this. We'll see if this can take the uh, perpendicular constraint. Looks like it can. And then I'll grab that and my original thickness. We'll make it equal. So now I should have constant thickness throughout. I've got a, uh, I guess, a little bend here. Let's see. Maybe like this. It's kind of difficult to uh, difficult to tell. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably about good. Um, so I'll dimension this guy with an angle. Let me see. Angle here. And I'm not quite sure what that angle was. And we'll do, I don't know, let's say 10. And we'll eyeball it later and see if we can uh, see if we can figure out. And I am noticing that my, I guess my handle down here is not quite matching up with their handle because I need to move my handle to the right, the bottom of my handle. Um, because currently, as it stands, when this thing comes together, the other side is going to look like this, and the two handles are going to touch. And their handles here are quite far apart. So I will come over here, and I believe there's a constraint we did for this particular section. Um, I'll just go back up through my constraints here. It looks like it is this one. See if we can move this to the right. And I'll give these uh, a horizontal constraint and then a, a dimension between them. And let's see. I imagine that this distance here is probably about an inch. So we'll do like 25 millimeters. And this thing here. Let's see what circle exploded. Oh, it looks like it's my. Uh, my, I guess, curvy bit here that uh, it didn't like that. So we'll try moving it over by hand. And let's see. I want this guy to be like coincident with the center, or I guess coincident with the center line here. So I'll do a point on a line for that. And Let's see what is going on here. Looks like, yeah, it looks like this is caused by my angle constraint. So maybe we need a slightly larger angle. So let's switch this to a, uh, like a 20. All righty. And see if we can pull this bit up here further. I'm actually going to put this constraint in um, so that I can, I guess, 
drag these bits around easier. So 25. And yeah, it looks like we're pretty, pretty short there. So maybe, maybe we'll go for like a 15. 15. Okay. Now I should be able to dimension this section. I'm going to, I'm going to grab this, I guess, small vertical section here. And we'll just give that a, a dimension of like, let's say, I don't know, like two millimeters. It doesn't need to be much. And I'm noticing that this is not tangent with that. So I'll make that tangent. And let's see if we can get this into a uh, more acceptable position. Let's see. Hmm. It's not liking it, not liking it. So I'm actually going to just real quickly delete these two guys. And we'll see if we can bend this over. We might need to move uh, this guy here. And yeah, it looks like this is just a, a difficult area for it to solve. Um, so I'm going to dimension the radius of this and hopefully that will help so we'll go 35 and let's see 35 and maybe we can mm -hmm. what am i what degrees of freedom yeah so it says these all have degrees of freedom so should be able to move some of them. Looks like these are pretty locked in. Oh, that's not good. This section here has like collapsed down. So I'm actually going to just delete this bit and should be another line section somewhere in here. Maybe it's just really small. Well, I'll grab all of it. Um, actually, I should be able to grab it from over here. Let's see, I believe. Let's zoom out and let's see which ones I don't want to delete. So the first one looks good, second one looks good. It must be this third one. And let's see, yep, it was in fact the third one. So I'll grab this here and I'll put that on that point. Maybe it does not like that. So let me just delete that real fast. And I'll just directly connect this to that and this one there. Okay. And we will, uh, I guess, leave off kind of the difficult um, section. I wasn't quite sure how that would uh, would work out, um, but it looks like some of my constraints early were uh, messing us up. And I'm going to put back in my width to constraint. So this one, and I'm actually going to do a line on a point to the center. Um, that'll make it perpendicular. And this one and bottom one there should be equal. Okay. And all we need now are a second set of lines that go up here to the center. All righty. And I want this one to be coincident with the circle. Let's see. And we also need the center of the circle on that line. And this one can be coincident with it too. Grab this one. Um, let's see. 
looks like it's kind of attached funky there so it's probably just easier to put it in again i might i might actually put it in uh down here let's do there to there perpendicular and oops let's see we probably want these two lines to be parallel also and parallel we'll make this and this equal and let's see grab my angle tool angle between these two uh, sure 20 degrees and then we'll make this circle a little bit smaller just so that it uh, fits in here and that seems to be looking pretty good um, might grab this bit here and move it in a little bit further let's see it's not quite looking um, like how I want it. Maybe we make this angle here like 10 degrees instead. Um, let's see, that kind of mess some stuff up. I'll do the, uh, the old control Z on that one there. And let's make, let's see. Maybe we do like 15. And the issue, I guess, is this line is kind of coming back down too far. So I think we'll probably stick with 20. Um, you know, difficult area. Okay. Well, we will uh, we will do that, and we can come back to it later if it uh, causes us any trouble. I'm going to grab the trim tool and remove this line in between those two bits, and I'm going to dimension the diameter of this circle. And sure, five millimeters seems a little small, but that's probably okay. And then I'll dimension the height of this. And sure, 65. Oops, 56, not quite. 65. Alrighty. And let's see. My guess is we're missing the thickness. Come over here, and it says that this part down here is the section that uh, we need to take a look at. And let's see. Looks like this joint here where the two of them join back together is the area that is causing us issues so i'll move like this um, i guess this kind of gives us a better handle shape and i'll just dimension the i guess height of this sure 45 and after thinking about this for a little bit, I think I'll delete this angle constraint and uh, I'll make this bit taller, maybe like 80 or so. Um, that kind of gives us this shape that they have in there in the picture. And one degree of freedom looks like, let's see, what is it? Looks like it's the horizontalness of this part here. So I'll grab this section, we'll do a horizontal constraint. Horizontal there, six millimeters, sounds fine. And for this section, I'm gonna kind of ignore the, uh, the rivet bit. Um, so I will put in a circle for the rivet but I'm not going to model any of the, I guess, geometry that you'd actually need for a rivet. So let's see. 
grab the diameter and we'll do a 2.5. That's just half the diameter of the bigger circle. Okay, and close that. And I'll extrude this. And we'll do it probably the thickness. I think we said the thickness was two. Alrighty. Uh, maybe maybe we'll extrude this four. And then I'm gonna grab one more sketch and do this uh, this section. Let's see right here, um, because you'll notice that this section is only like one half tall. So it uh, I guess you could do the same same sketch and then a, a cut or you could do two pads so i'm going to choose the uh, the two pad route and i'll grab my sketching plane and i'll do a sketch on this bit and then i'm actually going to hide the body here and come over to the sketch and i'm going to grab some of these bits on the sketch and the reason I'm dimensioning off of the sketch as opposed to off of the model is it helps with the topological naming problem. So I'll do a line here and let's see what is going on. Already having issues. I guess it's that one does not like that. We'll do these two horizontal. And this basically sticks out a little bit. We've got a, uh, like a little, I guess, nose bit, and then it comes back. And let's see, one more arc. And I guess I'm modeling this arc because I don't think in this version of FreeCAD you can change um, the geometry that's imported to be like part of the actual sketch. Like it's always considered construction. I think um, I think in a few of the other branches it can be changed. Um, but currently, one I have, it cannot. So grab these two, make them equal. And then I'm just going to give us a dimension between here and my Y axis. I'm actually going to hide my origin so that I stop selecting the origin and I instead select the axis. Do a horizontal dimension. Let's see, back to the sketch. And here, horizontal. Oops. And horizontal. There we go. And I'll give it like a, a half a millimeter of space. This is the space that's uh, in between the two fork bits. And then for this thing, let's see, we want both of these to be horizontal. And then we need a circle. Put a, a circle in here for the rivet. And I'll just dimension this circle right now. We'll do like 1.25. Um, that's actually looking a bit big. Maybe we'll do one. One millimeter is pretty small, so I probably have some dimensions messed up. But, you know, maybe you could find a one millimeter rivet. Seems pretty small though. And let's see, do this. And how do I want to do that? I'll actually, uh, let's see, I'll put two points in. Don't think that one made its way onto the line, so I'll put it back on the line. I'll make these two points horizontal, and then I'll do a symmetric constraint with the center of the circle. That'll make sure my circle's always centered. And then uh, I'll grab myself from the center to this other center. Do a vertical constraint. 
of sure. 18. And let's see, I just want the other circle to be a little bit higher. Um, it's not concentric with uh, with my circle. So we will uh, we'll put it like here and we'll just dimension between these two. We'll do 0.25. Sure, that sounds fine. And for this bit, I guess this is the uh, the curviness of the circle. We'll do uh, just a bit curved, maybe like here or so. And I'll actually dimension the radius on this one. And radius of one, Oop, that's a lot more curved than theirs. So maybe we're going 1.5. Maybe we'll do that and we'll just bring it back a little bit. So maybe we'll do 0.5. Oops, messed up, 0.5. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'll bring back the uh, original pad and I'll hide this sketch. And then I will extrude this, uh, let's see, point two millimeters. That should be halfway. Looking pretty good, pretty good there. Um, so at this point, I'm going to call it quits on this handle section. I will save. And then uh, we'll move on to the, I guess, secondary tip area. So I'm going to make a new body. And in this new part, I'm going to show the origin. And I'm going to just uh, move this. We'll give it the old transform. Let's see, transform. And I'm going to move it so that the origin for this part ends up kind of like closer to the origin. Um, or I guess closer to the actual part that's going to be inside of it. Alrighty, that looks pretty good there. And then in this part, I'm going to give myself a body. And the body is not like super important, but I do like to separate my stuff. And this body is active, you can tell because it's bold. So it should be good there. And I'm going to do a sketch on this plane. Alrighty. And I'm just going to close out of that sketch because we do need a few things. I'm going to, let's see, going to, I need, I need basically, I need this bit here and I need that bit there. Um, so I think what's going to happen is I'm going to come over to this handle part one section and I'm going to shape binder these two sketches. So that seems pretty reasonable to me. I don't see any issues with that. So we'll do come over here, grab those two shape binder. Um, and we'll see, looks like the shape binder is kind of funky. Um, so maybe that's an issue. I guess we will see. Um, looks like it got everything. It's just kind of trying to fill in some areas and it's not quite sure what to do with this bit of it. Um, but that should be okay. I don't think that'll cause us any issues. So then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to move object after other object. You don't need to do this. You could just reference the binder directly from the sketch, but I do like the tree to be in the order um, that it actually is. And let's see, I'm going to bring back the body here. And I write. So it appears that we are sketching. Let's see. I might, I might actually get rid of this, uh, this sketch here, or I guess move it up a little bit so that we're, we're sketching kind of in this section up here, um, as opposed to this section down here, because I want to end up with a sketch that I can extrude down and then we'll do a similar thing out here. I've got a second sketch um, that I can extrude the full height. So 
I'm going to come over here to sketch 002, and I believe it is placement I need to, to mess with. And we're looking at the Z axis. Let's see, it must not be placement, it must be attachment. So Z axis, we're going to move this up four millimeters. That should put us at the top of the model. So now if we edit the sketch here, we should see it is in line with the top of the model. So that just moved our sketch plane from here to here. Um, and that way we are, we are, I guess, in the correct area to extrude down. Um, you could have used a datum plane and then made a second sketch on the plane, but this is um, easier. And I guess it doesn't carry all of the uh, complexity of setting up a datum plane, but a datum plane would be better if you were doing something more complex. Or if you were doing like two sketches on the same plane, but luckily we're not doing that. So I'm going to come over here and hide the handle. And I will dimension, I guess I will grab a few of these bits. So I want this bit and I want that bit. And I also want the circle. And I guess the inner circle too. So now that we have these bits, we can start sketching the, uh, I guess, the upper half of this part. So I'm going to put a, first of all, I guess we'll start off with this bit because this bit is in the exact same spot. So I will just put a circle in there. Um, that's our hole for our pin. And then let's see, I guess it's a little bit difficult to see here because we're sketching like this bit here um, upside down. But we should be, should be okay. I am putting in something like this. And let's see, this guy here. We'll make this and that equal. And I'll make this and this vertical. And this one also vertical. And we want these two bits here to be horizontal. Let's see what else do we need. We need position. Um, I'm going to make this symmetric around the circle with, uh, I guess, using the center point of this sketch here, which is right here, um, as the other symmetric half. So the circle ends up being the center. Alrighty. And then I'm going to put a, let's see, a line in vertical line, vertical line. And then we're going to be modeling this kind of center pin bit. So I will grab two circles and I'll just grab their sizes from the bottom here. And let's see, looks like we get a, get a play, um, the 50, 50 game and I, I lost. So we'll pick the other one. There we go. And the position is, I guess, constrained. Everything's good except for the vertical position, which is fine. Do these two together. And then this one and that one, coincident. All righty. And let's see, I think, I think that's looking pretty good. I'll just slap a, uh, a box on the front of this thing. And this will be kind of the uh, beginning. I guess it goes on the other side. This will be the beginning of the uh, like tip bit here. 
So we're going to have this, something like this. And I write you to those two point on a line, this one and that one horizontal. And looks like we're all good except for the vertical position of this one. So I will grab, let's see, between here and the center of the circle, we'll do a vertical distance. Sure, five millimeters sounds good. And between here and this bottom piece, do a vertical distance of 10 millimeters. And then all we're missing now is the thickness. And I'll just give this the same thickness as down here. And let's see, how would I do that? How would I do that? Um, since these are both, let's see, since both this section here is, I guess, on the outside, and this section here is on the outside, I can actually just dimension this equal to a construction line across this bit here. So that's what I will do. Um, and that keeps our, I guess, design intent intact. Do that. And this part here is not constrained. So I'll just grab him and uh, put him on a, on a point. And looks like we're doing good there. So close this. And I will extrude, oops, not revolve, extrude. And for this one, I want to extrude two millimeters. Oops, it didn't like my face. Let's see what is going wrong. Oop, I see what's going wrong. It's this thing here, this, uh, I'll do it in blue too. This section of the uh, this particular face is, you know, kind of funky. So come over here and I'll grab the trim tool. We'll trim that out and should be good now. We'll do two millimeters. Okay, still does not like it, still does not like it. Hmm. We might have uh, some more complex issue. Let's see, what could it be? Oh, I see. We've got we've got it again right here, exact same issue. Um, so I will grab the trim tool once again, and we'll get rid of that guy. Alrighty, and we'll pad this. Oh, and it likes that. So I want to do two, and I want it in the other direction. Alrighty, and if we bring back our original handle bit, should see those two bits line up pretty well. And then we just need to do one more sketch. So I will hide this handle and I'll come over here. And let's see, I'll show the origin once again and I'll do a sketch onto this plane here. We'll do a sketch there and I'll hide my pad hide the shape binder and I'm going to show the previous sketch that we just made. And in this sketch, I need to import a few things. I grab the center circle and grab this kind of outer bit. And uh, I'll just grab those two bits also. Um, and it looks like our sketch is being hidden from us. So we'll exit or come back. And uh, now we can see what we're doing. So I'll hide that bit and switch back over to uh, normal geometry. Add some circles in. This is for the uh, pin. This is the outside. And then I'm just gonna mirror the uh, sketch that we made before. Alrighty, and I grab the trim tool. And I think I think we should be good here. So I'll close this sketch and bring back my original pad. 
and we'll pad this to, and it does not like it. Okay, so it doesn't like it because it doesn't combine with the uh, the base feature. So maybe if we do like a 2.1, or if it's uh, reversed, it'll it'll like it. Um, kind of difficult to uh, difficult to know since these two are not connected. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So it looks like we want to go in this direction and a two. And there we go. So maybe that was a, uh, a little glitch or something. I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but it seems like it's working now. So I will come over to the end here and I'm going to do two sketches. So the first one is going to be on this face here. And the second one is going to be, let's see. So the first one's going to be on this face. It's going to look like this. The second one's going to be kind of off here, like out in space, and it's going to look like this. And then we'll loft between the two of these. And in the loft, it's, I guess, important that both sides have the same number of faces. Um, it makes your loft a lot more consistent. So a little tip there. Um, so on this face, I'm going to hide my sketch. And I'm actually going to come down here to the original sketch that we made and I'm going to use the old datum plane. So I'm going to grab myself a datum plane and I will do this. I come back and reselect and I'll grab that point. We should have a datum plane on that point. Alrighty. And we'll call this like base. And then Let's see, I need a second datum plane. And I just want a distance. And I believe this is Z direction distance. Yep. And let's see, flip sides. We'll do, I don't know, 20 millimeters. Does that look like it's pretty far? That's pretty far. Okay, maybe we won't do 20 millimeters. Maybe we'll do like half of that. So maybe we'll do like 10. That seems kind of more appropriately sized. So now I'm going to see, I'll show both of these sketches and I'm gonna hide the second datum plane, oops. And on this first datum plane, I'll do a sketch and I'm going to import. Actually, first I'm going to hide this base datum plane. I'm also going to hide the origin so that it stops getting in our way. And I'm going to import the corners of this. And it looks like once again, we're not seeing the things we're sketching. So we come back in and Grab a corner once again, the last one, and I'll just do a box. I suppose I only needed two of them, um, but I grabbed all four anyways. I'll do a box there, and we'll hide these two. And then on datum plane four, I'll do a sketch, and I'm going to do a kind of funky shape. Kind of like a, a parallelogram, I think. Maybe this is a rhombus. But anyways, we'll do this one's vertical, that one's vertical. And I'll grab myself some points here. I'm going to use the old symmetry tool to make these two, I guess, symmetric vertically and then horizontal to one another. Alrighty, and then I will, let's see, I will grab this here and we'll make this symmetric vertically once again so that we're centered inside. All right, looking good there. And this will be like kind of the very tip of our, I guess our pair of pliers here. 
So I will dimension horizontally between here and here. Oop, let's see, did not like that. Horizontally here and sure 0.5 millimeters. And then maybe this ends up being like two or so tall. So vertical, um, sure 1.5. And on the other side, we'll do like a half of that. So 0.75. Alrighty. So we've got our, our shape here. And then I'm going to select sketch, I guess the original sketch and the second sketch. And I believe it is locked selected profile through other profile sections. And that's looking pretty good. So ruled surface, um, maybe closed, maybe not sure. They don't seem to do anything. Um, so we'll leave them both checked and that's looking pretty good. So let's bring our other bit of the pliers back. Okay. And I, let's see. I think this is, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna save this and then I'll rename this bit here, like a, I guess, grabber section or something. Do grabber with a capital G. Okay. And uh, let's see, let's see. Is there anything we're overlooking? I do think we did overlook something. Um, I think this section here um, should be only half tall when it's full height. And I'm actually going to mirror um, the handle bit over um, so that you can see what I'm talking about. I, I believe I said at the beginning that I wasn't going to uh, do that, but I will do it. So we've got a second handle section, placement, um, angle, we want 180, and we want 180 around, let's see, leave the Y axis. Alrighty. And not quite sure what that angle is. Apparently I typed 190. So 180 here, and we just need to move it up a little bit. So this is, I guess this is kind of like the pseudo assembly mode for FreeCAD, which is kind of the default mode. Um, so position wise, we need to move in Z direction, I believe. Yeah, so it should be here. Um, you'll notice that these both intersect kind of in that center bit. And I guess I'll quickly mirror this, uh, this grabber bit too. So we'll do the axis around the Y and the angle of 180. And then uh, let's see, position the Z. Not quite sure where this thing ended up. Oh, it's over there. Um, oh yeah, because it doesn't take into account our original position. So let's see, it appears we move this one 99 units. So we will also move this one 99 units in the Y. Should line it up with the other one. And then at that point, our Z should be good to move. Okay. And you can see that this two are uh, intersecting in the circle bit. So didn't quite get the circle bit right. And uh, I guess the circle bit should be part of the halfway up area. So I'll come back over to, I guess we've got to fix it on both of them. Um, so we'll start with the handle. I'll hide everything else and I'll just pop down a uh, quick save. And let's see. 
So this is part of the original pad, um, and it could be part of the second pad. I guess it's part of the original pad when it should have been part of the second pad. So I'll come back here and I'll actually set the tip to the first pad, and then I will edit this sketch and I will hide the pad. And I'm going to put down a line here and I'll make this equal with that one. And then I'm just going to turn off the, I guess, change these two to uh, construction geometry. And that should give us this. And then this second bit here is upset because uh, it's not connected to the first bit. So we can fix that. Um, let's see, first pad did succeed. Um, this sketch here, I will edit the second sketch. And for this, I'm going to, we'll delete that. And I guess we'll leave that circle in there. Grab myself a circle and a second circle between here and here are coincident. Oops, point on a line. These two are horizontal and this one and that one are coincident. And it looks like something is not liking something. Um, looks like that one was already stuck on there. Probably like a holdover from some other constraint. And then this center section here, I will diameter that. And we're looking for a 2.5, I believe it was. And then something is unconstrained. Let's see what appears our position. So I will grab this down here to the center of the circle. Vertical constraint, 18 millimeters. All righty. And let's see, does this pad go through? It does not go through because it's got a broken face. That means we've got an issue with our sketch, probably that I forgot to trim something. And it does appear to be the case, I forgot to trim this face. All righty. And let's see what we've got. Looks like we've got the correct thing. Um, and then I will save that. If we bring back handle 001, you'll see that it's looking pretty fabulous. No intersections. Um, I guess you would have to think some more about kind of this section. I guess not that section because that doesn't intersect anything. But this section here, as this kind of swings out, you know, you might end up clipping into that section. Um, but I'll ignore that for this demonstration. So I'm going to hide the sketch and we'll call that good for the handle. I'm thinking the grabber um, might have ended up broken. So we will investigate that. I come back to pad 001. I guess luckily for this one, um, we ended up with the, I guess, mistake being on the second sketch. So that makes it easier. We don't have to kind of roll through things. So I'm going to hide my pad and I'll hide my sketch. And all we need to do is put the uh, line in here, make it equal with the other line, and then take these two and make them construction. And let's see, looking pretty good. See if we got our additive loft still works. Yep. And the reason we didn't run into any any issues here um, with our I guess topological naming problem is because we I guess first of all we dimensioned off sketches 
Um, so we didn't dimension any of this off of any, I guess, bodies. And the topological naming problem, I guess, mainly affects bodies. It also affects sketches, but in general, as long as you, I guess, aren't deleting things um, from sketches, it, it won't affect that. Um, and in general, you know, if you are deleting stuff, it would have broken anyways, regardless of whether the uh, topological naming problem existed. Um, so we'll grab the other half of this and it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna end this here, um, but this is how you would do, I guess, construction of an assembly um, if, you, if you were doing it without an assembly manager. Um, like A2 plus assembly three or assembly four or whatever new ones might exist or start existing. Um, so yeah, I hope you learned something and uh, check back for, I guess, the other videos in this series.